So welcome back everyone. Welcome to school after your long weekend. It is good once in a while to step away from the point every so often to gain some perspective on our experience here. There's an expression, a metaphor that, about perspective that I frequently use because for me the picture is so clear. And the expression is, it's difficult to see the forest for the trees. Now, if you've ever walked in a very thick forest, you'll know that sometimes the only thing you can see around you is the trees. The next tree, you get beyond that tree, there's another tree. And it's very, very hard to get a view of the whole thing. In order to see the whole forest, you'd actually have to get a good distance away from those trees in order to be able to see the bigger picture. So our having left the point for a few days has given us a view of the forest before we dive back into the trees. And getting some perspective on our situation reminds us of what we are doing here in the first place, of how far we've come, and of where we are hoping to go. Now this morning, Mr. McCusker gave us a view of the forest when he reminded us that at this point, we have only three more weeks until Thanksgiving break. Looking back at the beginning of the year, can you remember the first time you sat in this chapel? Looking ahead, can you imagine how it's going to feel sitting in this chapel in May at the end of the year? Look around. Can you imagine how it's going to feel next year? That today without our ninth graders, most of our ninth graders here, we get a little preview of what next year will look like when the ninth graders have graduated and moved on. Next year at this time, some of you students will have been elected our senior leaders. Some of you adults will have been chosen to hold different positions of leadership than you have now. But those decisions will be based, made based not on your behavior then at some point in the future, Instead, decisions like that are based on your behavior today. Every day we build a foundation of trustworthiness or untrustworthiness, of consistency or of inconsistency, of dependability or not so dependability. And it is on this foundation that future judgments about our ability to lead well will be made. Having integrity or doing the right thing consistently is something you do and build every single day. It's not just one action, but the sum total of lots of little actions. To go back to the forest analogy for a moment, if the separate little trees are individual acts of compassion and honesty and respect and fairness, kindness and courage, then the forest, all of them together, that's integrity. This week's theme for the whole school is integrity, and you underclassmen today are going to help us kick it off. I'd like to thank first Alec Diorio and Colin Rosado and Jack Bay Ruther who responded to our chaplain's assistance call for help for this week's service. With very little time to prepare, they have stepped up ably and admirably, and I am very happy to turn things over to them now. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, we would like to thank Ms. Smart's advisory group for serving us as greeters today. It is really nice to be welcomed by friendly faces into the chapel each Thursday. And and it is also fun to be the ones who, wel who welcome other people. If your advisory group has not yet had the chance to serve our community in this way and would like to do so, there are, there are spots available for them 
next three weeks. Please send, please send an email to Jalen Sinclair or Andres Piliad today so they can put your group on the schedule. We are pleased to welcome Ms. Jocelyn, who will be speaking on behalf of our mentors a little later in the service. We also welcome Kyle Fuller, who will provide our gift of music today. We want to thank them especially for spending their free time over the break to, pre to prepare for today's service. Before we begin, let us take a mindful pause to center our thoughts and, as Mr. McCuster says, to be where we are while we are here. So please sit up straight and take a deep breath in through your nose as you exhale quietly, close your eyes and relax into this moment of peace and quiet. At the end of one minute, Jack will ring the bell three times. On the third ring, when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, are you ready? Take one more deep breath in through your nose, and as you exhale, we will begin. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. McCusker, faculty, staff, and gentlemen. Though I'm sad that many of our ninth graders are not present, I'm glad to have the opportunity to share some thoughts with you today. Since the beginning of the school year, we focused on a theme for each week. So far, we've talked about courage and have begun making our way through our core values, which we abbreviate as Chris F. We've had C for compassion, H for honesty, and R for respect. And today, we are up to I for integrity. But this core value is a little different from the others in that integrity is actually the sum of the other core values. OK, I'm a math teacher, impromptu math quiz. I need your help. What does the word sum mean in math? Anybody? Uh, one. Perfect. A sum is what you get when you add things together. So integrity is a simple equation using the core values that we have covered thus far in chapel. Compassion plus honesty plus respect equals integrity. Integrity is the result of living by the other core values. Let me explain. We have defined integrity as doing the right thing. But what is the right thing? Our core values serve as our guides. Telling the truth is the right thing. Being compassionate and kind is the right thing. Being respectful is the right thing. But integrity involves consistently doing the right thing no matter what the situation is and no matter who is around to see you do it. As our theme for the year is the hero's journey, I'd like to share a story about a hero and his mentor and to ask you to imagine yourself in a situation. So for a brief moment, close your eyes. And think about a time when you had to make a difficult choice about what to do. Maybe the choice is between studying for your test tomorrow or watching a video on YouTube. Or maybe it's something even more serious. OK, you can open your eyes. Your mind runs through these various options. Usually there are two options that present themselves. One, what's easy, and the other, the right way. From the time we are born, we are taught what is right and what is wrong. So it is not that we don't know what the right thing to do, but right often competes with easy. Writer J.K. Rowling explores this in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the fourth book in the series. If you've not read this book, let me give you a little background. Harry is a teenage wizard who is faced with the perils of growing up, having to take responsibility and acting ethically. But Harry's not alone in his adventure. He has a mentor, a wise old wizard named Dumbledore. At one point in the story, Harry is competing in a high-stakes competition called the Triwizard Tournament. 
In this tournament, four magical teens are faced with the tasks that challenge their cleverness and more often their integrity. Over the course of the competition, Harry has to navigate between his strong desire to win the competition and his good intention to follow his moral compass, which tells him to put others before himself. These two competing desires set up a moral conflict within Harry, and he does not always choose to behave ethically. For example, prohibited dragon previews and herb stealing for the underwater challenge are just two of those examples. Harry's mentor, Dumbledore, recognizes the choices that Harry had to make and labels them as what is right and what is easy. So what can we learn from Harry's experience? The story shows that the road to acting with integrity is not always clear or simple. Temptations and competing desires often cloud this way. But whenever a path is unclear, a person's good intentions go a long way. What matters most is if you are acting in the best interest of others. You can ask yourself, are you acting with compassion? Are you being honest? Is what you're about to do respectful? If the answer to all of these questions is yes, then you are demonstrating integrity. We can also learn from Harry that consistency is key to integrity. When a, a person does one big, generous, good deed, it's often noticed and appreciated. But one good deed does not equal integrity. Remember, integrity is the sum of other core values being used every day. A person of integrity is one who completes little acts of compassion, respect, and honesty every day, whether or not anyone sees him do it. And it is the person of integrity who is admired, trusted, and respected by all. We've talked a lot about the little grains of sand that have the power over time to wear down the, sphinx of the, wear down the nose of the sphinx. But here's a different perspective, just as Dr. Perryman mentioned. Little grains of sand cemented together also form the building, block, building blocks that form the Sphinx and the pyramids in the first place. Those pyramids have lasted thousands of years because of the combined strength of billions of little grains of sand. Just as little, negative, dishonest, thoughtless acts have the power to eat away at a culture or a person's character, it is the cumulative effect, or the total, the sum, of countless little, positive, honest, thoughtful acts that builds a strong culture or character. So, here's my challenge to you. When you are faced with a choice, ask yourself three questions. Am I being compassionate? Am I being honest? Am I being respectful? If so, then go for it. And when you mess up, and you will, I do, and just like Harry Potter, we make the wrong choices sometimes. And remember that it's never too late to apologize. A sincere apology combined with the determination to do better next time is also a mark of integrity because it is honest, compassionate, and respectful. It is not always easy. Uh, it's not always the easy thing to have integrity, but it's always the right thing. Integrity will guide you well as you continue the difficult, complicated, but exciting journey of your life. Integrity, in the end, is what will make you a hero. Thank you.
Well, thank you, Kyle, and thank you, Ms. Jocelyn, both of you, for your leadership in chapel today. And now that we have heard some thoughts and some definitions of integrity, it is your turn to share yours. As I said earlier, I'd like for you gentlemen to help us kick off this week's theme by participating in a conversation about integrity. Integrity is not always as easy to define as some of our other core values, but I think, I feel that we know it when we see it. We just know a person of integrity when we see him or her. So I'd like for you to take a moment to think about times at Cardigan specifically that you may have seen examples of integrity. What, what are some of those positive grains of sand that when cemented together form the strong and lasting foundation of our Cardigan way? As you think about that, if you'd like to offer an example, please raise up your hand. And Jack is going to bring you the microphone so that you can share it with other people. But when you share your example of integrity in action, when you see that, please don't mention anybody's name. Because our goal is to identify behaviors that show integrity uh, rather than individual people that do so. So has anybody thought of anything? taiwan has got something? Taiwan. Yeah. Great, great. So the idea of speaking a common language in order to be inclusive, to make sure that everybody around you feels included and not left out, is definitely a sign of integrity, of compassion, respect. Very good. Does everybody else have something? Who is that? I can't quite see. Is it Patrick? All right. What have you got for us? Absolutely. It's very tempting, isn't it, when we're doing assignments and so many things are due at the same time and we're running out of time. It's very, very tempting sometimes to look on somebody else's or to, to cheat a little bit. But to have integrity means that you hold yourself to a higher standard. And that's done a lot around here. You're right. That's a good one, Patrick. What else? Does somebody else have something? Um, oh. Great, Luke, I think if I heard you correctly, you were saying that you, if somebody's having a bad day, you go over to your cardigan brother and help them out. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, and that, and that shows integrity in that it may not even be somebody you feel particularly close to, but because of that bond of brotherhood, you have the integrity to go over and ask him how he's doing. It's a terrific example. Who else has got one? Oh, good luck, Jack. Now all the hands are going up. I'm glad to see this. Esteban, thank you. It's a great example. Little stuff. Just picking up a piece of trash that you didn't drop simply because it's on the ground and it's not where it's supposed to be. And the fun thing to do is when nobody is around to just start picking up trash because you can, you can know within yourself that you're doing it just because it's the right thing, not because anybody is watching you do it. And that happens a lot here too. That's a great example. Let's take one more. Do you think we could scurry up to the balcony, Jack? Give those guys a chance or uh oh here he goes he's running up there with the microphone i hate for anybody to le be left out this is common space common balcony all right what have we got who's going to say something john or who, who? Yeah, yeah, absolutely seeing somebody alone at a table or dr perryman's favorite subject Floating, when you see somebody that needs to sit down, being aware enough to have integrity 
and trust that the cardigan way is to have compassion and respect for others and to invite them to sit with you. That's a great example too. Guys, the, the, the nicest thing from my vantage point right now is seeing all the hands that have gone up that we don't even have time to get around to. But I think that those hands bear testimony. They, they bear witness to the fact that this is a place of integrity, that you are young men and a faculty of integrity. It's something we hold very dear. We know it when we see it. We know it when we are it. When we exhibit integrity, we know it. And what I think I can guess by just the examples that you've brought up is that having integrity makes us feel good. We appreciate it when we see it. We feel good when we have it. And life on the point is ever so much more relaxed and fun and safe when everybody tries to do the right things consistently. So I thank you for sharing your good thoughts and insights today. And as Ms. Jocelyn pointed out, being a person of integrity is not necessarily easy. We often have to choose between doing the right thing and doing the easy thing. And it can be very difficult, especially with our full and rich lives here, to find the energy not to cut the corners. But we are not alone. And we can ask for help from one another, and we can ask help from God. So I invite you now to join Colin and me in prayer or in quiet reflection. Gracious God, we don't always have the energy to do the right thing. Please forgive us when we take the easy way out but also grant us strength to keep trying to exercise our moral muscles so that doing the right thing might become easier and easier for us. And then bless us with opportunities to act with integrity, to do what others claim cannot be done, to bring kindness and justice and decency into every day so that little by little with your help and guidance we change the world amen amen thank you colin at this time please rise and join in the singing of the cardigan hymn For beauty which is thine For winter snow, for afterglow When day fades into dreams Of goals toward which we all will strive To keep thy faiths alive To keep thy faith in us alive Together we will strive as cardigan is mirrored in our crystal lake so clear, may we through life reflect thy truths and memories as dear. Of summer's green falls colors bright, of glimmering stars at night, God give us strength to carry on through storm or weather. Peace vouchsafed by living here for all the world to share. Thank you. And now as we send you to go in peace, uh, the benediction today first in Hebrew and then in English. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Yair Adonai panav elecha v'chuneka Yisar and I panave lecha, yesem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and evermore. Amen.